For RamblinRec.com here, I'm Kyle Tate, joined by Mark Teixeira. Mark, you're back on campus here on the flats. First off, talk about why you're here. A couple of dinners and, and talks that you're doing. Yeah, last night I spent the uh, endowment dinner for the Georgia Tech Athletic Association and Alexander Tharp Fund. And as a recipient of a scholarship, you know, 10 years ago when I was at Georgia Tech, it's great to be able to give back now to, the, you know, the future, the current and future students uh, and great athletes here at Tech. Now, let's rewind back to 1998. You're coming out of high school. Why'd you choose Georgia Tech? You're from Maryland, so it's a long way to go. Yeah, you know what? I wanted to go down south or somewhere where it was warmer. You know, Baltimore isn't the greatest place for baseball weather-wise. You know, that we have a lot of talent. And, um, you know, most of the ball players that, that I grew up in my area, you know, went outside of the state to look for places to play. And so I visited all over the country, and, and I went to Georgia Tech. And as soon as I came here and met Coach Hall and met the entire team, I knew it was the place for me. Looking back on your time here on the flats, 1998 to 2001, what memories stick out to you about that time? Uh, best three years of my life. I mean, on the field, off the field. I met my wife, which was obviously a, a big part of my life. And, you know, just the family, the, the group of guys that I played with and, uh, you know, the, the connections that I still have to Georgia Tech. You know, there were so many great times. And, and that's why I continue to be involved, whether it's fundraising for, for baseball, for the management school. You know, no matter what it is, I want to continue to be involved at Georgia Tech. In 2001, drafted number five overall by the Texas Rangers organization. You only played in the minors for about a year. Just talk about your quick ascension up to the Rangers uh, big league team. And, you know, you didn't have to deal with those bus rides for too long. Yeah, and I give a lot of credit to Georgia Tech because of that. You know, I spent three years at a top program. We had some great times, and, and Coach Hall does a great job of running his program a lot like a, a pro you know, a pro team would, would be run. You know, the guys, we're all here because we're good. You know, we can play the game. Coach Hall gives us a lot of, um, you know, respect and, and lets us, you know, try to be the best players we can be. So I, I developed in my three years here that would have been spent three years in the minor leagues. So, you know, when I got to my first year in the minors, it's almost like I'd been there for three years already. And uh, because of that, I only spent a year. After four and a half years playing with the Rangers, you got to come to Atlanta. You sort of got to come home. Even though your home's up in Maryland, you got to play in front of a home crowd where you played college. What was that like playing for the Braves? It was incredible. You know, one of the best years of, of my career, you know, on the field, being able to see family and friends off the field, being closer to tech. And, you know, I wish it would have worked out uh, business-wise, but as we all know, uh, baseball is a business, and sometimes you can't get to play exactly where, uh, where your, your heart was at the time. But, you know, I can't, can't complain about the year I spent in Atlanta, and it's worked out pretty well because I'm loving my time in New York now. It has worked out well for you, making a lot of money for the New York Yankees. What's it like playing for one of the, I mean, the most historic baseball team there is in the New York Yankees? Uh, it's incredible playing playing for some great organizations in Texas and Atlanta, and also in Anaheim. You know, I got to to see uh, a lot of different parts of the league and and play in both leagues, which is great. But getting to settle in New York, playing in the new Yankee Stadium, the greatest fans in the world, you know, the, on the biggest stage in the world. There, there's a lot of excitement that comes every single day to the ballpark, and you know it, it makes winning a championship as we did in 2009 that much more special. You came up as a third baseman. Now you've sort of switched over to the other side of the diamond as a first baseman. Uh, what were the biggest issues for you in making that transition? Uh, you know, first base is is the hot corner on the other side of the infield, and so you know I, I think it, you know it was. You know, hands-wise and reaction-wise, it wasn't that big of a deal. But at first base, you have to cover the base. And when there's a bunt, when there's a slow roller between you and the pitcher or you and the second baseman, you have to figure out when to go for the ball, when to sit back and, and cover first. So that's the biggest thing. It took me about a year, year and a half to really figure out, okay, where exactly are the balls I'm getting to, which balls do I need to let my second baseman get, let my pitcher get, and you know, the rest that I'll take on my own. All right, now let's switch to your off-the-field exploits. You're, you're helping out with a couple of charities. Tell us about the charity work you're doing. You know, it's, it started in, in my home, hometown of Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, at Mount St. Joseph High School. Then it went on to Georgia Tech, and I continued to, to try to raise money and doing some great things for the Athletic Association. Right now we're trying to, to raise some money to do some improvements to, to Russ Chandler Stadium, which is you know, one of the best stadiums in baseball. But it is 10 years old now, and we need to you know, step up the, uh, you know, the, the inside of the stadium. The, the playing surface is great. The stadium itself is great. But the clubhouse, the batting cages, things like that for our players that are, that are great recruiting tools and then will also help them on the field. Uh, we're doing that. And also in New York, I've started work with Harlem RBI, which is an amazing organization that gives kids in Harlem that would otherwise have, have no future, not have a chance to go to college, not have a chance to even graduate high school. Harlem RBI has given them that opportunity, and it's fun to be a part of. 
Excellent. Now, one last question. A lot of kids are very tempted when they're drafted out of high school. You yourself were drafted in the ninth round by the Red Sox, um, but you decided to go to college. What can you tell kids that are trying to make that decision between high school and college? You know, for me, I wanted to go to college and, and have fun, first of all, get an education, second of all, but also be more prepared for minor league baseball and more prepared for the major leagues. I would never want to be in a situation where so many kids are that they signed out of high school, might have gotten a little bit of a signing bonus, but it didn't work out, and you're 25 or 30 years old without a college education, and you have to start from scratch. So it was it was a great uh, a great choice for me because it worked out not only personally with meeting my wife and having the three best years of my life, but also professionally because I was that much more prepared for Major League Baseball. So I'd always tell the kids that you know you're never going to get those four years back of college, three or four years of college. It's it's a lot of fun, and three or four years of college is a lot better than three or four years in the minor leagues. All right, Mark, thanks so much. All right, thanks, guys. That's Mark Teixeira joining us here on RamblinRec.com. Until next time, I'm Kyle Tate.